All right, we are live. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is the first ever Gimlet Office Hours, where you can get some updates on Gimlet development news, and I will do some demos, and you can uh, ask questions in the comment section below. And uh, this is the very first time. I am scared as hell. Uh, it's uh, it's not a, a, a it's not a good experience to talk into the void and uh, not having anybody on the other end, uh, you know, giving you feedback like visual or just uh, just uh, you know like like a look back at your face so if you leave a comment i will see that and that will definitely will help me through this first office hours so uh today it's uh, going to be uh three topics i'd like to show you uh the gimlet environment manifest file i think you see that before but if you have not this is a, a good time to just get uh, familiar with the concept i'm also going to talk about one chart uh one chart to rule them all. This is my Helm chart with, uh, with you know, uh, generic application deployment needs. Uh, it, it should cover all the basic use cases. And I'm going to show that and uh, discuss the limitations and how you can use that. And I'm actually going to use it today uh, because I'm going to use one chart with Gimlet to configure an environment and uh, basically uh, show you how to uh, do your application manifests with these two tools. Today we are live on Twitter and YouTube. LinkedIn, we are not live uh, because LinkedIn just doesn't authorize me yet uh, to be like a video a streamer. And uh, so, hey, everyone, uh, people who know me from, from Gimlet or some other tools I made, like the one-click infra tool. And uh, this is just a note for me. I think we have time and uh, I will try to be slow and thorough. So uh, I think let's get started with the Gimlet environment manifest. So you have probably seen the Gimlet IO website, and uh, this is where you know I put my documentation. I uh, put some some effort into these docs, and then try to level you up along your you know your Kubernetes uh, learning uh, path. And uh, at the third item, I have the manifest file, and basically this is a very core concept in Gimlet. Uh, the manifest file is a YAML file. Uh, it's an alternative, you know, to the uh, common Kubernetes YAMLs. Should be a lot shorter and more concise, and this really should contain only the parts that are changing from deployment to deployment. So no boilerplate in this one, except just a little thing, uh, some boilerplate, you know, uh, pinning down the chart version. So uh, um, it's using. A Helm chart. Uh, you can use any Helm chart, uh, and then you can also pin down the values you have in this uh, for this Helm chart and some other meta information like name, environment, and namespace. So I have this little uh, folder here uh, with uh, the Gimlet staging YAML inside, uh, and the concept is that you keep your Gimlet environment manifests within your application repository because this is the place where developers come and change some stuff, like if they want to change an environment variable, like the node env uh, from uh, production to staging or, or vice versa, uh, this is the place where they can have control on the things that they should control. So nothing else, but all those things that uh, they should control, like even their, their subdomains or their uh, C names, they can control from within this, uh, from this file. So this is under the .gimlet folder slash staging YAML. And uh, Gimlet, the Gimlet CLI has some tooling interpreting this file. Uh, for example, one uh, important uh, uh, CLI command is Gimlet manifest template. Uh, and if we run this one uh, and feeding in our staging YAML, uh, you can render your Gimlet manifest into, into common Kubernetes YAML. So if you are... Uh, unsure about something like how it's going to be deployed to Kubernetes and you are familiar with the Kubernetes YAML format or you are just curious, you can see how uh, this is going to be uh, fed into Kubernetes. Like uh, in this case, uh, I have a config map with the uh, node environment variable I just set. I have a service, which is just some Kubernetes boilerplate basically, and the deployment, which has uh, all the deployment uh, spec. And uh, yeah, you have also have uh, it also has an ingress as well, which controls your uh, the, your domain name mapping basically. So 
There is the Gimlet manifest format. You have seen that. There is the Gimlet manifest template, uh, which is a tool to render that manifest, whether you want to just debug or actually you can use this in your CI and you can even pipe it into kubectl apply and just uh, fire it off to Kubernetes. Uh, there's another uh, sub command of the Gimlet manifest uh, tool, which is create. So you are done with your staging efforts. So now you want to do some production stuff. And to do that, uh, there's a little helper. You can of course copy your staging file and just uh, and just uh, tailor it or edit it. But you can also use Gimlet manifest create with some uh, mandatory information like environment, uh, namespace. Uh, and also the chart name. So again, the manifest file pins down the chart you are using. It, uh, in this case, it works from my local chart, Helm chart uh, registry. So I had added, I have added the one chart repo to my local registry. But you can also reference it by URL, or you can also use it. You uh, uh, use a private Helm chart, which I'm going to show maybe at a later uh, office hours episode. So with this command, now we have a production YAML. It's it uh, got the chart version from my local registry and it has no values. So it's a clean slate for you to configure your production app. And again, this is in your application source code repo. And um, yeah, so I think uh, I've already iterated on, um, through some of the, the benefits of, of having this file, pins down everything. It's in the application source code repo. It's declarative. Uh, things don't um, just scatter around you know in CI pipelines or in other files this is a very nice format and actually other tools have similar formats as well so this is really the way to do it and you have tools to re render and debug this uh, this uh, manifest file now I have another tool uh, that is one chart um, I had recently some uh, buzz around it so you may have known me or, or, or my, my Twitter uh, through one chart so one chart is a generic ham chart uh, if I open the website it tells basically oh so this is the first stream I am going to just make my screen larger so you see more hope you you are still with me uh, but um, by now so this is one chart uh, there is a catchy uh, subtitle one chart to rule them all but it's it's really made for that it's basically capturing you know the 20 30 use cases that typical application deployments have like you know domain names volumes health checks high availability uh, even uh, some advanced stuff if you want to attach a debug sidecar container and uh, you can add it to your uh, local Helm chart repository and just start playing around with it. For example, um, if I want to add volumes, usually, you know, you have to look up the Kubernetes uh, documentation, how to add volumes, and you find that uh, basically you have to make modifications at two or three places in your Kubernetes deployment uh, configuration. And the identation, I always get it wrong at least two times before I, I actually am able to uh, make it deploy. So here is this uh, alternative definition. Uh, I set an image and I set a volume. Actually, I can set multiple one because multiple volumes because it's an array. But uh, I set the things that are actually matter: the name, the mount path, the size, and the storage class for your cloud provider to actually put uh, like a, a, a cloud uh, volume underneath. And um, you know, uh, one chart is just a pure Helm uh, or pure, pure Helm thing, so it doesn't work with Gimlet in any any way. Uh, so you can use the Helm tooling to actually uh, write a values file, template it with Helm, and you know just inspect uh, the uh, the output. And I, I'm actually going to do that. If I uh, spit this out, um, actually not on my screen, but uh, into a file so we can inspect is uh, basically it renders you know the the application deployment just like before and uh, if you want to check out the volumes it uses the the the, the name and uh, you know the it creates also a persistent volume claim with the right size and you know the right uh, storage class so uh, one chart. Is a standalone component. You can use it. Uh, it even takes care of basic high availability things, like uh, it adds you like a pod distribution budget, so your node maintenance will not harm your deployments in any unwanted ways. Uh, you can. It also 
by default uh, sets a pod uh, anti-affinity rules, meaning pods will not be placed on the same node. So uh, quite a few best practices, and I'm hoping to extend this into, you know, uh, to a nice set of, let's say, 30 uh, best practices um, of the Kubernetes world. So you can use one chart without any gimletting. So just uh, go out and check it out. So this is one chart. Um, and actually, uh, so you can use one chart standalone, but uh, Gimlet uh, tries to make your life easier, your local development workflows. And remember that uh, I talked about the Gimlet manifest, like here is this production manifest, um, which has no values right now, and it's using one chart. So there is a nice command called Gimlet manifest configure, which is doing actually quite a cool stuff. If, uh, I like this feature a lot. So if you type gimlet manifest configure uh, and you feed in your production YAML and the output will be also production YAML. So you basically update it in place. Uh, what it does is that it opens a browser tab on your uh, on your laptop. So that's quite cool, I think, or I hope it's very useful. And our previously unconfigured application, don't use latest tag guys. I'm just, I just just want to change the value. Um, um, this production application will be configured like this. And I will also add the volume like before, but it's going to be 100 gigs and it's going to be called, uh, it's going to be called data. And I'm going to use, let's say, Azure. So the storage class is going to be uh, default. So, and I also maybe want to have the environment variable, uh, the typical node env. I'm going to set it to production. And uh, also the high availability, for example, I talked about it just uh, before, are uh, default by on. You can turn it off if you want to debug something, but but basically it tries to promote some best practices. And uh, the instruction here is if I close my browser, uh, then it basically generated the values and actually read, read, write, uh, wrote the values into the production YAML file. So if I come here, all the things I did for my production and environment configuration is right here. And I can just repeat this on and on forever if I want to have more replicas, less replicas, whatnot. So I close this again and then come here, replicas is five. So this is a nice workflow for you to edit your um, application environments in place within your source code. Uh, so, so that's sort of uh, one one uh, key point I'd like to get through with, with Gimlet and OneChart that uh, you can have these nice uh, little uh, workflows. And uh, again, you can uh, run Gimlet manifest template. And uh, I'm just hoping, actually, I know that uh, the production values that we have set are part of the, of the YAML now. So we have, what, what did we, we set? Mm. The production has like container port 8080 and somewhere down here, yeah, the service has port 8080 and the uh, deployment uh, offers port 8080 right here. So that it has an HTTP port. So um, that's that. Uh, so the conclusion is that you can have a declarative manifest in your application repo that is capturing everything. And the manifest templating is, is, is with Helm. So it's really using industry standard tooling. You can opt out of this workflow if you want to at some point, or you can, you know, you can use this tooling that you have already used before. And if you don't have a, um, a starting point yet, you can always use one chart because uh, it's going to be, it's going to get better and better. And um, you also have like this local manifest editing workflow, workflow with a UI. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this will speed up some developers work who just don't want to fiddle with that um, many YAML, that, that, that much YAML or with Helm values file documentation from GitHub. And actually uh, I touched this before that uh, the uh, environment manifest can also handle other places than a Helm repository. So like a Git repos, even private Git repos, where it's going to be a typical use case, or actually it's a typical use case to start with one chart, which is a Helm, uh, which is a public chart, fork it, make it private and add stuff that you 
want to have. Like if your uh, your engineers are working with, on Azure with buckets, then you can have a flag that is doing uh, that is mounting in um, a, a bucket that you specify in your values file. And you can also have the uh, UI rendered, uh, this, which I'm going to show you uh, at another occasion, uh, probably next week, um, because all the Gimlet manifest configure features are using, uh, again, standard data formats like the um, uh, values, uh, schema JSON file, and so on. So I'm going to show that next week. So that was rather quick. So you are probably good to go for, for your lunch or if you had lunch already, have your coffee. Uh, I just want to give credit to two uh, artists. Uh, I have took the video from uh, Arvind from Pexels. This is a, a royalty-free video, just needs attribution. So I am hoping to, to fulfill that by now. And I also... Uh, got a nice stock music video from uh, from this this site. It's called Band Sound. Yeah. All right. So I wasn't slow at all, uh, but that was the first one. I hope you enjoyed it. And the next week we will we will be back with one chart forking, tailoring, and you know uh, to add your company needs. So that's that. Uh, Gimlet. Uh, we touched environment manifests. We touched one chart. And we have touched um, configuring an environment. So all my uh, labels got, were uh, not used, but uh, here we go. So thanks for listening and uh, have a great day.